Hey guys, can you hear me? Yep, there we go. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, got it. Good stuff. So we got two two podcasts lined up, one for this weekend, one for next Friday. That's a good job. Moving right along. Um, yeah, so how's how's everything? Um, what's the what's it looking like? I looked at the at the spreadsheet, so it looks like it didn't really touch out to too many more or uh, it looks like Leo added like uh, he marked a lot like 7-24 on the left and then made a lot of them yellow I don't know if that means uh, he's going to reach out or he's unsure about these podcasts yeah yeah um, let's see that I'll be uh, I'll be real with you guys I have had almost no time to work on it I had yeah. a friend lose her father last weekend my truck broke down it's been a it's been a crazy week but this weekend I've got time blocked off specifically to dig down deeper into this yeah 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 I've been kind of busy myself again back from uh, we went to the Missouri the Lake of the Ozarks here over the weekend mm -hmm. and stuff like that so been getting back that was pretty good um yeah um so in general what's what's to be said here um there is a bunch of additions like the the ones from like like the 60s and to 80 was that largely leo leo david doing that or uh, no, I, I just put these in. I just haven't filled out all the information yet. Oh, okay. Yeah. But, uh, I kind of just took that approach now where I'm just like, I spend like a, a set amount of time just trying to find them and I just put mm. links to the podcast and then I go through and get more information later. Yeah. Yeah. So but, yeah, I saw the changes that Leo made where like he changed a lot of these to yellow. I was unsure what they, uh, what that meant. Mm-hmm. Yellow, you mean um, the orange orange ones? Oh, I guess it means awaiting response, so I guess he reached out to those. Yeah, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Awaiting response, okay. Um, yeah, yeah, sounds like it. Sounds like it. Um, What would be most useful to go over at this time? Because I mean, we, we kind of just got to keep keep chugging through the list. Uh, what else uh, can we say or strategize on for how to go forward? Um, I think with the way my time got swallowed up, I've got I've got nothing for the podcast project other than to say I've got to dig back in. I'm gonna I'm gonna just stick my name on 25 of them tonight and then work through all the research and drafting over the weekend and you guys will see that Monday but I wish I had something else to report for you yep 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 okay um yeah I think for me it's just like I want to finish filling out all the information for these podcasts and then hit 100 this week so that we can just focus on reaching out to people and then also just maybe researching like YouTube channels or go on to another uh, yeah. form of collaboration. Yeah, maybe move on to the, perhaps the next one. Um, yeah, YouTube channels, yeah, there's plenty. So that's probably plenty to do there, right? On a YouTube channel, so that, that can take, take a bit of time researching that. Um, but I mean, maybe just also I mean, between the podcasts, which are, I guess the distinction we were making is that the podcasts are just voice versus the YouTube, which are voice plus video. Yeah, I guess we can kind of, I think, collapse them too. I mean, they're similar. Do people, is there like a di very different habit for both of them? Like, do people also download the YouTube ones just to listen to? Or is it, 
like different consumer habits like one is like an account. I think it's less on like a download and more just like on a streaming base like engagement so Stream, streaming on YouTube yeah mm -hmm. like you don't really download YouTube videos that often on like so mm -hmm. does it look like the YouTube route I mean that's still got good uh, viewership or is that kind of if we compare the podcast versus YouTube, is the podcast kind of the more desirable one? Do you have any insight on that? I feel like the podcast is good for uh, COVID season at least because on YouTube people like to kind of be a uh, like watching stuff, mm -hmm. and it's kind of tough to like watch a Zoom call. Yeah. Whereas like podcasts, you just listen to it and you can just do whatever you want while listening. So. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, like, YouTube is something that maybe might even be better once you're able to travel more and just, like, meet up with people whenever that may be. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. At this time, should we be given good energy to the YouTube route as well or, or just maybe finish the uh, podcasts route and then move on to the another branch, which was we were talking about the university contacts and all the different open source people around universities. Yeah, I think university might even have a larger long-term payout compared to YouTube. Yeah, yeah, it could be. So, I think, yeah, yeah. I think part of the trick with YouTube, YouTube, it's been my impression, tends to be a little bit more casual and atmosphere on average than podcasts. Mm -hmm. And I think when it comes to the YouTube stuff, maybe we get a lot more targeted with YouTube. You know, mm -hmm. sample across a bunch of different YouTube channels. Five find only the five or ten absolutely most content appropriate places for open source ecology to go on YouTube and go after them once we've made it through the podcasts and started on the college stuff because there's a there's a there's a lot of work that goes into working the university angle and as we work down through the podcasts, reaching out scheduling things out it'd be good to keep up that social media momentum by sort of supplementing with YouTube rather than putting it to the side altogether mm-hmm Okay. Uh, and how do you guys feel about, like, in terms of reaching out to university audiences? Um, do you guys feel, because that kind of, you have to have almost like a technical discussion with them. Do you guys feel in a good position to, to reach out to them based on different subject areas? Or, like, I think, I think what is feasible is, I mean, myself or anyone else can look at, okay, what are people working on if it's an open source any kind of an open hardware project that has some of the components we have um, would be game and we can just basically engage and say hey um, is there room for collaboration just just reaching out and see um, see what kind of response we get Do you guys feel comfortable with that with that approach or I think so yeah yeah, yeah I think so it just also kind of depends what you want from the universities. Like, I could see you doing a lot of like speaking engagements as well. Just like, even yeah. that could be done on Zoom, and you can just like speak to engineering school and just like people gain interest through that too. Yeah. Yeah. I think one thing we should focus on with um, universities is, <clears throat> um. Not necessarily hobbyist clubs, that's not what I'm reaching for, but special interest groups. You know, if there's a group of engineering students in one particular college somewhere that has mm. a, an extracurricular organization centered around open source hardware or something like that, mm -hmm. uh, make the handshake with those guys, get them with those guys, start collaborating with them, and then that becomes a really easy way to get ourselves uh, better acquainted with the engineering department as a whole or whatever the case might be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So to, to get prepared for that, we can maybe prioritize a few projects. Yeah, I mean, there's groups working on, say, the plas plastic filament making. There's definitely 3D printing or some digital fabrication, uh, potential collaboration. So maybe we can kind of, I guess what would be required is just a gen generic, I guess for me, a generic narrative of how we can fit in all the different places. So somewhat of a, of a university outreach strategy 
uh, that we could write up and then follow up on it. I get, yeah. So if it, the story has to make sense, but I, I think I can do some of that. Mm -hmm. And focusing on the priority projects, like just with the 3D printing and the film and making, that's a big one right there. And like I was talking about before, just reaching out to people like the rover, like a tractor, little GPS or a autonomous tractor projects. I mean, there's a bunch of different stuff we could uh, fit in or collaborate on. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah, we could we could do that later. Um, yeah, yeah. So I guess for now, um, I guess we don't have much more to. Uh, what else? What else to talk about right now? Anything else to cover, or should we? Because I know Joe and I. So Joe, you wanted to go over the three D printer build. That you are you ready for that? Yeah. Yeah. Certainly. Yep. Uh, so we we can do that. Um, as far as Josh, do you have, I mean, any other questions or anything? No, I think just my goal is to fill out this list to 100 by next week, so. Yeah. Are we, gonna, are we planning on meeting at this time next week, too? Yeah, yeah, let's check in, continue checking in. So, um, let's see the 30, let me look at my calendar. Uh, how's that looking for 3 p.m.? Yeah, I mean, if that will be actually after the podcast. Yeah, if like 5 p.m. Does 5 p.m. work for you guys? Is that a good time? Mm -hmm. uh, Friday is 5 p.m. is great. Okay, so let's put that on a calendar for a marketing meeting, 5 p.m. Yeah, yeah, let's do that. Um, yep, so I invited you guys. Um, let's see. All right, I just got that email. Yep. Okay. Right, okay. Perfect. So I think we I guess I'll. Uh, yeah. All right, yeah, I guess I'll see you guys next week. Yep. Okay, Joshua, okay. thanks a lot. We'll, we'll continue working. Yeah. Okay. Bye bye. Um, yeah, so Joe. Um, yeah, so you've got all the parts laid out for yourself on a on a table in front of you, smoking your smoking your pipe, industry standard. Pipe. Well, I'm coming to you from the office now, but yeah, I've got a fold out table in the kitchen, and everything's organized with another little side table for actual workspace. Yeah. Um, so does it look like you've got all the parts, and did you kind of go through the inventory, or? Yeah, I didn't. I didn't open up all of the tiny. I didn't open up all of the bolts and everything like mm -hmm. that. I, I. There's a lot of things that are packaged together, and I'm going to hold off on opening those packages until I know I need something in those packages. But all the big stuff's laid out. Yeah. Um, I've looked at the the overall layout. I don't think it's going to be. There's a lot to do there, but I don't think any of it's going to be. Beyond what I'm comfortable with, you know. Yeah. Um. So, do you know the so the build manual? Have you taken a look at the D3D Pro page? Do you see the manual there? I've been over the manual, but I've only I've only kind of browsed through it. Well, all right, what order does it make sense to do these things in, and so forth, right. and making sure I've got sort of an overview of it. But I haven't I haven't gone over it in fine detail. Yeah. I should have some be I should have some friends coming up tomorrow evening to help me dig into it too. So yeah. Um, yeah. The basic process would be to build the frame up, um, and that's the corners plus the metal pieces, and then just start building the axes. And as far as um, do you want to do you want to go over some of the the build process, the build manual? Just take a peek in there to see what what's first and whether you got your handle on it. Or yeah, I'll take a look. Or do you have any? Any specific questions right now, or I don't. I don't. When you and I were talking about when you and I were talking about things, I think you told me that the the current build manual on the D three D Pro is completely up to date. Let's see. Um, 
there's it's uh it, it's up to date it doesn't have the super detail built in for which uh, we should maybe it's it's a pretty short overview of it so um, are you in a position to do like when you build it to, to like document the build steps or how do you how are you thinking about that yeah, absolutely. I was gonna I was gonna take pictures with my cell phone the whole way through, um, and one of the people coming up to visit me this weekend should be bringing a decent camera so I okay. could do some video of it as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what I would suggest is um, we start. Okay, so take a look at this. What we have right now, and then maybe what you could do is take that. So take a look at that link. Um. there's yeah so for the frame you've got so let's explain that uh, page four there's three corner pieces the upper ones and the bottom ones are all just plain corner pieces the top ones are ones that mount the axes and there's right and left hand side so um, the detailed procedure of that there's pictures on that if you look at page four, can you can you picture how the frame goes together? Can, oh yeah. Do you think you can do it? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, because all it is is snapping those pieces into each other. Now the deal is uh, what I would suggest there. So you know how deep they go in, because you're gonna want to like bang them in with like a rubber mallet, or if you have a hammer, a, a block of wood, so you don't break the pieces. Um, some may be tight, some may be loose, but yeah, you definitely be banging on it. Uh, what you want to do is mark a line so that you know that there's a uniform you're getting them to a uniform depth because you might be banging on it if you don't see where uh, how deep they are you can't tell how deep they are in uh, that's the thing right so why don't we do this can would you mind if we go through this process of we'll take this what we have here and then say after page four you can do maybe like paste in a bunch of pictures one by one okay here's um how i started the base the sides the top etc um can, can you do that so maybe like take this manual and actually add a bunch of pictures to it so it's all in this, oh, this yeah. manual. okay let's do that so let's i'm gonna make a copy here um let's see i i, I can share my screen with you Roll up a manual that's a little bit more procedural is what you yeah yeah, absolutely. Um, so let's see. File, make a copy, entire presentation. So and you've got the pieces now. See, actually, this I sent you the pieces that are the monolithic ones, right? Like when, for example, there's the axis the the motor side the idler side the carriage side of each axis those are one piece correct do you see the distinction because before we used to make them like the videos on page five they were a clamshell design mm -hmm. where you where you bolt them together we said hey why don't we just redesign it a little bit and make them one piece units um i believe you've got the one piece units that's which is I the, think so as well. I'd have to run into the kitchen and look over my parts again, yep. but I believe so as yep. well. Uh, so what we have there is because the pieces are all together, what you're gonna do is uh, final assembly of one axis, like on page, um, like this video here, that one, x-axis assembly. Yeah. So. Here, let's share a link with you. I'm going to actually put this on your log, but take a look. So I made a copy of the entire manual, and then we can... So we'll leave the original one alone. Uh, have you work within the Joe's D3D Pro build manual. And this is like, you're free to slash and burn through this, because this is a copy that you can modify as you like. Um, but let me, let me just add that to, to your log. Are you at this time? Are you still busy a lot with the work, the formal work, and the pipe, pipe work, or? 
or that's like things are finally things are finally simmering down again now. Uh, they should have been said they should have been relaxed already this week, but uh, mm-hmm. with everything, it was like it was like uh, life was waiting for work to die down so that everything else could go nuts for a little while. But things are simmering back down now. Yeah. Uh, or there's a new there's a new rhythm. There's a new rhythm, rather. Yep. Subst and bed. Uh, so I'm gonna do file publish to the web. What I'm doing here is uh, I take the embed code from this. And then I can paste that into your log with a link underneath it for editing. Can you see my screen? So this is uh, how your log, I just embedded this on your log here. So you can click edit on that. Are you able to see my screen? Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. So from page four, there's actually... Uh, just to get you going on that, there is an order that makes sense. So I'm going to do slide duplicate slide here. So so frame build order. Um, I'm just going to write the notes on that. It makes, um, as you would see by actually building it, it makes sense to do it naturally in a particular way because um, frame build order follow this frame build procedure so you want to make uh, so I'm gonna say In general, build the base, then uh, build the top. And once you have those two, put the verticals in between. Otherwise, it's going to be like, you'll notice that if you do it in a different order, I mean, it's kind of intuitive, but if you do it in a different order, you have a tough time like fitting in the last piece if you don't follow this procedure. That makes perfect sense. Yeah. Um, and the, in the build base, you can get into details. You want to build um, build each opposite side. So the general principle is, is you build the each opposite side, and then fill in, connect the connect connect the two members in between the two sides. Can you picture that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So that's that, and there you got the frame. It should take you uh, however long it takes you to do that, um, an hour or two, depending how quickly you work, uh, how how much time you're getting oriented on this. But that's that's the basic procedure. So then um, I'm gonna continue and do slide duplicate slide axis build order. You can watch some of those videos uh, on the in the manual there, but in general, um, yeah. General is you build the motor piece, and what does that mean? Um, attach, build motor piece. So first you put put um, pulley. On the motor shaft, attach motor to piece, motor with four screws, then that's it. Um, build motor piece, then you build the carriage piece. What's that mean? So slip in four bearings. 
um, mount the closure of the bearings and mount closure of bearings. If you haven't really taken a look at too much detail, this kind of will make sense. Mount closure of bearings. Bear of um, Well, this makes this makes I've dug in enough that this makes sense okay. so far. So. so you know what I'm talking about there, uh, and that's your your piece there. That's that's all it needs there. It's actually quite simple because before we used to t mount the two two clamshell pieces together. Now it's just one piece, but that means we, to insert the bearings we have to make this closure piece, and then build the idler piece. Now that one is where you have to mount the two bearing halves. So that's the two flanged bearing halves on a M6 by 18 screw. And that goes through you, so you screw that on, and that's pretty much your piece is ready. Um, now, next thing is take, take three pieces. Um, insert the rods and then you're gonna there's little uh, set screws set screw the rods down wind belt through yep now that's there's there's five axes all together so that you'll repeat this five times this is like we have multiple people working on it because there's two two y axes two z axes one x but these kind of this is kind of how they all go together. So once you get that, if you do this by next week, I don't know if you have time, but that would be good. How much time do you think mm -hmm. you're gonna have to work on this? Actually, like, what was, what are you thinking about schedule for doing this? Actually, any any ideas or? I put, I put about eight hours on on my calendar for open source ecology between Saturday and Sunday, and I was going to split that half and half between the podcast project and this. Yeah. Going in the next week, it'll be a whole lot easier because yeah. in the evening hours yeah. it'll be too hot to be outside, and so this will become my this will become my evening project next week, and so it'll yeah. probably be two or three hours an evening until I see it through, or until my friends come back next weekend to help me finish it off. Yeah. 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 So I think the best thing is, you know, start on this process. Let me know if you've got any questions. But I mean, the ideal thing is just keep blasting pictures like bam, just go one after another and just ping me. If you're stuck, you don't know what's next. Just uh, email me real quick. I'll take a look at it and give you got more guidance. But I think a lot okay. of it should, should kind of go together. Um, yeah, if you're mechanically inclined, which sounds like if you have worked on engines and things it sounds like you are it should be pretty and in, relatively intuitive I guess so we'll see we'll see how it goes um, yeah I think that's that's enough to get you started definitely um, frame will be cool that you'll, you'll like it how it goes together it's pretty solid so it'll be fun to build and then work on the axes and go from there. I did have one question yeah. for kind of myself but also what I'm thinking about this in terms of a retail product yeah um, the the plastic that's used to build this, the 3D printed parts, is really nice, rigid, tough looking stuff. Um, but I notice we have I don't know I don't know what the 3D in, the 3D printing I don't know what additive fabrication term is it. If we were molding, I would call it flash or overcast. Yeah. Um, just thinking about it intuitively, or just you know just kind of thinking about it. Uh, would a tumbler type process clean those parts up? Like if we had a just a, 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 a like a plastic garbage can that run on a run on a tenth of a horsepower electric motor to tumble those around with some abrasive, would that destroy the tolerances for a lot of little screw holes and fittings? Um, I mean, I myself, I can just take anything that's too fuzzy off with a file and it's no big deal. But I just wonder as we as we want to develop these to to present them as a product if there is a non-laser la uh, non-labor intensive inexpensive way to clean the parts up a little bit more as part of the production process you can do that various ways the i mean the tumbler i don't i'm not sure i haven't tried it but I, it doesn't seem like that would work because those are kind of like they'll bend they'll be like hairs and they'll just kind of bend 
Uh, so knife is the best thing to do. Now what you're seeing there is that's an artifact of using 1.2 nozzles with 0.4 millimeter layer height. That's really like brute force printing. Um, mm -hmm. Normally people print these kinds of parts using a 0.4 nozzle, a three times smaller nozzle, and then all that goes away pretty much. But the disadvantage of that is that the parts aren't as strong. So, so it's, you know, that's negotiable. So that's definitely one way to do it. Now, printing with small nozzles means that you're taking much longer to print. So, mm -hmm. but because it's going automatically, you can possibly do that. So we can, we can um, revisit that. It's true they look they look pretty in, intimidating in terms of like all those little uh, as far as the hair the stringiness from large nozzles because what happens is you pull in the filament but because it's such a big nozzle a little bit can ooze out still um, that's pretty much fixed by the smaller nozzles but then again the parts are weaker and and stuff like that you can also get rid of a lot of that like if you print one part at a time you're not jumping from one part to the next and every time you move between parts you leave a little string so you mm -hmm. can be get very clever in your printing strategy now you can do it one part at a time there's a mode where you can say print me not all of them at the same time but finish one then move to the next one move to the next one that's another mode these are details of production engineering that we can optimize and refine um, I've been doing just okay the plain full bed of parts the thing jumps from one to the next and um, this will be uh, you can say probably less noticeable the larger parts you build like say we're building torch tables and like rubber trucks I mean that kind of thing um, depending on how we print it will not matter especially if you design it more like if it's a part say like a track that you don't have to jump between parts or doesn't have like projections or whatever like if it's a simple part it'll also be very very clean um so so it depends we, we can optimize it definitely um yeah i just so, i'm just trying to think about it i mean sometimes when people go out into the market looking for a thing they've got they've got certain expectations anyway if you were buying if you were buying a used yeah. pickup truck for the sake of four-wheeling it off road you know some some rivets and 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 panels and stuff that would be attractive to you as a customer and so as I'm thinking about this from a product design from a salesman standpoint uh, if we if this is an artifact of prioritizing a part integrity part strength and B production efficiency on our part over call it aesthetic gloss then it's it's a it's a perfectly okay thing and that's very on brand for open source ecology i mean I, I know we're not really we're not really trying to build we're not we're not a silicon valley startup it's not really a business but as i've as i've observed before these terms and the, thinking about it in these ways who i think will help us uh this is this is a little this is a little this has got some some rough edges and little strings hanging off, but that's because it's tough as nails and printed super efficient. That's a perfect way to to talk about things made by OSE, and I, I think that's perfectly acceptable. It just occurred to me as I was going over the parts as something, you know, if I'm a salesman and I'm going to take this thing and do a demonstration with it somewhere, if I'm going to take this once we're allowed to open it up again, if I'm going to take this down to the new maker space that's opening up in Phoenix as soon yeah. as the pandemic stuff quiets down. Uh, I'm going to want to have this all cleaned up personally just because I want it to look, you know, professional. I want it to, I want it to reflect well. Uh, but I would hate to ship, I would hate to show, show somebody my machine where I've put three or four hours in the meticulous knife work cleaning it all up and then ship that customer a machine that doesn't have that work and have them call me on the phone. Oh, Joe, what is this? You know, your machine was clean and this has got all these little things on it even if it doesn't affect the performance of the machine, which obviously it doesn't, um, looking for some way, looking for yeah. some way for our final ship project to have a little bit more polish will be something that I think will only help us from a sales yeah, standpoint. Right. I think you're right about that. And there's an intermediate we can go there, like the brute force 1.2 millimeter nozzles, I think perfectly acceptable will be going to 0.8. Um, maybe not to point four I mean point four you get really pretty parts but you know they're not gonna be as strong um, 
0.8 might be like just the right mix where you have better better control over the stringing properties. Now, mm -hmm. also, um, you know, we're printing in PLA right now. There may be other materials where that problem maybe disappears much more. So this is like the de getting into the nitty gritty, gritty details of okay, well maybe some other material or even the brand of the material that we're getting right now is off or we just got maybe the, maybe the temperature is a little too high or whatever like th those kinds of things that's that may be um, details to to refine it like as really as we really dial it into to producing much more of these printers yeah yeah we can definitely yeah. negotiate that as we go along well i think i think the trick i mean i'm going to build this up i've got a couple of like absolutely simple dumb little projects to run through as my first handful of test prints. Yep. Uh, once I really get into this thing and I start making stuff, one of the things I'd like to attempt down the line is 3D printing all the parts for another 3D printer pro yeah. Yeah, for the exercise of it. Okay, I built one, now I've made one. What is? What have I learned about the process, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. It will definitely be good feedback. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well then, yeah, I'll dig into that. You'll see, uh, you'll see some pictures. You'll see some pictures coming onto that guide this weekend, then, and uh, I'll yeah. let you know if I get hung up anywhere. But I think it's, I think it's, yeah, I've, I've, I've had an engine apart and put it back together again. I've been yeah. overwiring diagrams. I don't think this is. Uh, there's definitely. I'm going to need more help. I'm going to yeah. need more help with FreeCAD and the electronic side of it, most likely, than I will with just the, the yeah. nuts and bolts of it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, and feel really feel free to ask any questions. I know that the the guide is not it's really not not complete because we've we've done the one for yeah the one year I mentioned that was complete was the one from uh, you probably looked at three D printer build manual on the wiki which is a complete but that's the version um, the official release from. It's now two years ago. Well, updating this manual, updating this manual, and building and and making a manual that's oh yeah more procedurally oriented will be a really good step in making these things marketable too. Yeah, yeah. So actually, if you want, so here on the axis. Um, From 2018 so link right there I'm adding that to the, the guide and what oh. you have is the first time that we're really building out some of the one the single piece axes because that's that's just a new new update because the feedback was uh, you can just shave off a bunch of time by making those one pieces so that's that's what we're doing right now but anyway, um, so you can refer to the build manual from 2018 if you get stuck on any places, but between the two things, between the build manual from 2018 and just the basic pictures here, it should be pretty straightforward. Uh, so yeah, but feel free to ask questions. If you're also comfortable, just post, feel free to post on uh, OSC Workshop's Facebook page if you like, and go from there. Yep. Okay, absolutely. All right. I just sent out, uh, I don't have access to the document you just sent, so I, oh, really? I just uh, oh. put a access question sorry <clears throat> there anyone with a link edit so right now it's actually open for editing uh, by anyone so this has been the worst thing it's like being a kid and knowing that all the christmas presents are in the closet unwrapped like that thing's been on that table waiting for me and uh, i go in to make breakfast oh i should uh, but i've got to go and do this thing you know and coming in the evening oh man i'd really like to sit down and look at this it's nine o'clock if you start that now joe you're not going to bed before 2 a.m you know that yeah, kind yeah. of thing so i'm i'm chomping at the bit to dig into it yeah no that sounds good all right great so uh that's it. I shared the permissions there. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. let's let's talk. Just yeah, just send me emails if you got any questions, and we'll continue there. Otherwise, fr next Friday. All right. Sounds good. Okay. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. Bye bye.